Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Structuralism. This is our third lecture in linguistics theories. In sociology, anthropology, archaeology, history, and linguistics, structuralism is a general theory of culture and methodology which implies that elements of human culture must be understood by the way of their relationship to a broader system. So it works to uncover the structures that underlie all the things that humans, uh, human beings do, they think, perceive and feel. Structuralism has also been summarized by philosopher Simon Blackburn. According to him, structuralism is uh, the belief that phenomena of human life are not intelligible except through their interrelations. And these relations constitute a structure and behind local variations in the surface phenomena, there are constant laws of abstract structure. Structuralism in Europe developed in the early 20th century, mainly in France and uh, the Russian Empire, and the structural linguistics of uh, Ferdinand de Saussure and the subsequent Prague, Moscow, and Copenhagen schools of linguistics. Structuralism is an ambiguous term that refers to different schools of thought in different contexts. As such, the movement in humanities and social sciences called structuralism relates to sociology. Emile Durkheim bases sociological concept on structure and function and from his work emerged the sociological approach of structural functionalism. Apart from Durkheim's use of the term structure, the semiological concept of Ferdinand de Saussure became fundamental for structuralism. Saussure conceived language and society as a system of relations and his linguistic approach was also a refutation of evolutionary linguistics. The origins of structuralism are connected with the work of Ferdinand de Saussure on linguistics along with the linguistics of the Prague and Moscow schools. In short, Saussure's structural linguistics propounded three related concepts. In Ferdinand de Saussure's course in general linguistics, the analysis focuses not on the use of language, parole, the speech, rather on the underlying system of language that is called as lang. Saussure argued for a distinction between lang an idealized abstraction of language and parole, uh, the language uh, that is actually used in daily life. The sign. The sign is, for so sure, uh, the basic element of language. So the sign is the basic uh, element of language. Meaning has always been explained in terms of the relationship between signs and their reference. He argued that a sign is composed of a signified and a signifier. Here we have a bit more explanation of signifier and signified. Uh, you can see that a sign uh, is composed of Signifier and signified. Signifier means things that give meaning. Uh, that can be word or image. And signified what is evoked in the mind, mental concept. And sign 
It refers to anything that conveys meaning. It can be a word or an image or sound even. Sign is essentially arbitrary and that there is no natural relation between a signifier and signified. Sign is constituted by the signifier and signified because the words uh, have no meaning. Because different languages have different words to refer to the same objects or concepts, there is no intrinsic reason why a specific signifier is used to express a given concept or idea. It's thus arbitrary. Signs gain their meaning from their relationships and contrasts with other signs. As he wrote, that in language there are only differences without positive positive terms. This differed from previous approaches that focused on the relationship between words and the things in the word that they are, they design it. So sure departs from all previous theories of meaning by discovering that language can be examined independently of its reference. This approach examines uh, the structuralism examines uh, how the elements of language relate to each other in the present synchronically rather than diachronically. Synchronic comparisons of languages meaning how languages, languages compare to each other at any given point in time. So language, the comparison of language, how language, uh, how languages compare to each other at any given point in time in the past. A synchronic study or analysis in contrast limits its concern to a particular moment of time. Thus, syn uh, synchronic linguistics takes a language as a working system at a particular point in time without concern for how it has developed to its present state. So, synchronic uh, comparison means just um, uh, the status of language as a specific time, uh, point, of, uh, point of time in the past. And diachronic, <coughs> diachronic uh, study, meaning um, a study of how languages change over time, a historical examination of the influences of culture, travel, and other elements uh, on the way language uh, languages work, how they form rules, how they change forms, morphology, uh, how they grow, and how they become old, etc. So this uh, kind of study is called diachronic study. When languages studies uh, studied over a period of time. According to Sashore, there are four basic principles of structuralism. He stated that meanings we give to words are arbitrary. The physicality or structure of a word holds no bearing to its connotation or denotation. Means that meanings we give to words are arbitrary. You know, if you say dog, for example, the dog word it may give it may have uh, different meaning for to different people some may take it white dog black dog or uh, different type of dog okay uh, so uh, same like car if you have a word car so it may mean different to different people some may take it small car big car luxury car or taxi or red blue white uh, different different types of cars. The second one, okay, we have here the fourth one first. Uh, this uh, miss uh, organization. Anyway, uh, let's talk about this first. Um, and the the third one, actually, this is the third one, but uh, I mistakenly spaced it uh, before the third one. 
And the fourth principle, according to Sashore, is that language constitutes our word. So it's the language that makes our word. Because language exists, thought exists. Okay, this is a very important point, you know, see. Uh, because the word freedom exists, we understand the concept. However, if no such word existed, the thought would would have been vague or unclear at the very least. I mean, if there is no words, I mean, we cannot um, have a thought, clear thought about different things. So, if there is uh, no language, okay, there is no word, according to him. And the third point is. Uh, according to Sashore, there are no intrinsic or fixed meanings in words. Words in, in themselves have no fixed meaning. If a group of people were asked to think of dog, some people may mentally uh, conjure a border coolie, uh, this is a type of dog, others a beagle, this is also another type of dog, and others a uh, a labrador. So these are all different uh, types of dogs. So the word dog gives you different meaning. While these are all dogs and would correctly fit under the category of dog, this word would not accomplish simultaneous thought or a fixed meaning. So this is uh, all uh, uh, from uh, Sashore. Yes, he has given four basic principles that uh, you know represent structuralism and you are to find more on this topic uh, in your assignment coming up yeah here you have uh, write a comprehensive note on structuralism so you will form a good comprehensive assignment on this and your next lecture is coming up very quickly very soon inshallah within uh, a couple of days hopefully uh, thank you very much all the best take care